YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Continuing on with the experiment that I was doing in the last video where I react to a, an individual or a topic that has nothing to do with quantum grammar. Uh, this one follows suit and I'm going to be reacting to a video that features Jay Dyer who I actually don't really know how to describe him other than he's a very uh, logical, argumentative individual, very intelligent individual who talks a lot about uh, philosophy and I think he's a, a bit of a theologian, talks a lot about religious beliefs and the Bible and what, you know, I guess whatever he considers true Christianity to be and spiritualism and he definitely is very knowledgeable about different aspects of the church different offshoots of the church um, and he he argues with anyone that's open to argue with him on the internet he holds public twitter spaces where he will invite you on and you can argue with him and i myself I, again i i admire the guy i have a lot of honor and respect for him he's put out a lot of content on youtube he's super intelligent i mean anyone can see that and I do enjoy a lot of what he says. He's very humorous at times. But then, of course, there's much that he says that I don't agree with simply because it cannot be certified. And basically, my cognition of his argument for uh, the existence of God is that basically nothing makes sense unless there is a God. That's that's what it boils down to from what my understanding of what he conveys so in this video he's going to be talking about the spiritual collapse of the west along with this other fellow here i have not watched this video yet but i'm going to comment on it and react to it through the lens of correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar now jay dyer is very knowledgeable about language and grammar of course plain english fiction adverb verb adjective pronoun grammar and language but again like the uh, Brian Parker video I did uh, a short time ago and you can find a link to it up there somewhere if my editing team does their job uh, he, he doesn't play the tape the whole way through sort of cherry picks to use his uh, methodology of logical fallacies he cherry picks what's useful for him uh, Etym etymological wise and sort of leaves the rest go that isn't at least that's my perception of it and again none of this is meant to be you know an attack or anything on the guy i'm just looking at what he says through a very blunt factual and correct sentence structure lens so let's have a listen to what he has to say 
there's a lot of different figures who had influence, uh, as you said, that during that uh, confluence of ideologies, you could say there's a good book called Fire in the Minds of Men that traces the history of the uh, revolutionary faith, you could call it. So there were definitely medieval uh, predecessors and parallels. And I just did a, a five hour lecture series from uh, Malcolm Lambert's book, Medieval Heresy, who is a famous medievalist and in his historical treatise, he covers all the movements, the Bogomils, the Gnostics, the Thomas Munzer Rebellion, how these different groups, Joachim of Fjord, how these groups influenced the revolutionary ideologies of the time period that you're talking about. And so all of that plays into like these currents of spiritualism, the spiritual Franciscans, the idea of a third age of the spirit that would come that would bring this sort of utopia, a revivalism, um, communitarianism, communism, communalism, all of those ideas were floating around. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to comment on those words he just used from a quantum grammar lens. Communism, communalism. Those words only picked up negative connotations in the, like, 19th and 20th century. When you look at those words outside of that context and you just look at the particles of the words, communism, community, those things are just conveying contracts with togetherness of people. It's not negative or positive, it's just a group of people coming together, uh, coexisting cooperating, compromising with a contract. That's all that is. It's not a negative condition of state at all. The negativity only comes in when you think about it in a political context. Then you start getting into these negative conditions of state where nobody can own anything or, or everything must be equal you know, you have to force it to be equal, which is a, in itself a violation of rule one, rule equal, when you force things to be equal. Because if you have to force something to be equal, then it's not equal. Like if I, if I create a government or a society and I end up having a police force, a military, this is theoretically, a police force, a military, a whole medical system, everything, and you don't want to be a part of it, I can't force you to be a part of that community. Now, I can force you to leave the area where the community exists if I have claimed that territory, but I can't force you to become a part of the community because that negates contract. Contract is by consent. You see what I'm saying? So communism in its political context is a violation of rule one, rule equal. But communism in the sense of the particles of the word outside of that political context is a positive performance word, and it's a wonderful idea until you poison it with those governmental ideologies. And, and at times they were part of secret societies that went underground. They were part of uh, Rosicrucian or Masonic philosophies for a time. And really right around the time of the Renaissance or the Enlightenment is when you can start to see those Rosicrucian ideas really come to the fore, where the idea was we can start a kind of ideal, idealistic republic. So they look back a lot to Plato, Plato's philosophy. Um, they looked to Neoplatonism at times. They looked to Rene uh, the, the Renaissance uh, magicians and characters that were influenced uh, by uh, Plato, like Marsilio Ficino. They looked to the Renaissance magicians. That's pretty. That's pretty funny. I suppose that's where, you know, maybe some of the concepts of sorcery came from. Or Cornelius Agrippa. And so there was all of these bubbling undercurrents of not just 
liberal ideology, but also esoteric and hermetic philosophy. I just did a stream last night with uh, Church of the Eternal Logos, and we were talking about some of those currents that were floating around at that time. And I would agree that not everything about the Enlightenment is necessarily bad, especially if you know about the Latin papacy during that period. There's a lot of corruption, a lot of bad stuff going on. Um, okay, Jay. Name one point in history when there hasn't been corruption within the papacy. I challenge anyone out there to name one point in history where corruption was not a part of the papacy. Very well known. It's not even denied uh, by any reputable historians anymore. But, of course, that doesn't justify the uh, pendulum swing uh, opposite extreme that happens in a lot of those revolutionary ideas. So you get corruption and the natural result uh, typically is, oh, it the swings to the opposite, right? Oh, then religion is corrupt. And you get, you know, Voltaire saying that he won't be happy until he sees the last priest strangled, strangled with his own entrails. So these, these radical reactions are not the solution, even though they probably are hitting on legitimate problems. Uh, ideologically, you have the same problems that uh, somebody like David Hume points out, where David Hume just takes axioms from the classical peripatetic tradition like the... With all these uh, multi-syllable words that Jay is using, and that's one of the reasons I enjoy listening to him, is because he does use all these multi-syllabic words that are not common everyday language usage. Uh, I'm noticing in the background there, like all the books behind Jay's head and the I think his name's Michael there. He has a whole library too. And it's very similar to some of the court libraries that I've been in. So I'm looking around and it's like I have some, some shelves here and here that are kind of messy. I need to I think I need to step my game up and get some nice, you know, leather bound editions of whatever to put up on my shelves so that I can get a, a, a you know a higher degree of sophistication in my visual here no doubt the idea that there's nothing in the intellect that's not first in the senses from uh, from Aquinas uh, and Aquinas adopting that maxim from Aristotle and he says if this is the case then there's really no uh, uh, scientific experiential knowledge for God because you never in the sense datum experience causality god etc or the first cause you just experience phenomena a and phenomena b and so uh hume is actually correct in some of those critiques i'm not saying humanism is correct i'm saying that critiques are correct he actually hits on some of the points that we as orthodox would agree in terms of the problems in latin and uh, western epistemology i was just reading Vladimir Lasky's book uh, image and likeness and he has a section uh, towards the end of the chapter on the procession of the spirit and the doctrine of eternal manifestation. And he hits on that there. He says that the, the medieval Latin tradition, especially the Southern boy comes out there. He, he hits on that there. <laughs> especially when you get to the second uh, council of lions, when you get to uh second ladder and council, when you get to um, Florence, right? This time period solidifies dogmatically. So, and this is why I enjoy listening to Jay. Like, he does hit on some things that I agree with, and then he sort of goes off into far right field on these things. Now, the way I look at it, no one asked me, but, you know, this is my video, and it's a reaction video. It's a video of opinion, so I'm going to share it. And if you're familiar with me and my channel, this is my position regarding spiritual and religious uh, belief systems is that we, and, and I'll, I'll narrow it down to me, I experience everything via my senses. My five senses, sometimes maybe more senses, uh, through my port of sensation of which I import authority. Okay? Nothing would exist if I wasn't sensing it. Like right now, you would not exist if I were not sensing you right now. Uh, that's basically the be-all end of it. Because, in correct sense structure, one may not make a claim for anyone else. Unless one has their permission. 
but one may not one may only make claims for oneself so if i'm not here if i pass away then everything else passes away with me because i'm no longer here to sense it therefore it does not exist now you may say well jason if you pass away and i'm still here then i'm still here the world's still here it's just you that leaves well that's not true because i can't make a claim for you i'm not you i can't make a claim for you i may only make a claim for myself so therefore when i leave everything disappears if you leave everything disappears for you but for me you just disappear do you see how that works some people have a hard time wrapping their mind around that. Uh, and so therefore, by this logic, then if, like, like he just said there, he just said there in, in so many words, he said, believing in a God that you can't prove, you can't certify it. So it's just a belief. It's something you can't certify. It's something you can't prove with the continuance of the evidence. Now, if you experience things that you can't explain and you attribute those things to a god well now you're operating on an assumption you're assuming that it's god you can't prove it but because you can't understand it you just you take the stamp and say okay that's god boom that's god boom can't explain that boom that's god that's god it's a it's a quick and easy way to just stop thinking it's the quick and easy way to cease thinking about anything don't have closure on it call it God that's easy because guess what you can't explain God you can't give a continuance of the evidence for God uh, so that that's what he's touching on here and that's sort of where he and I part ways is that he's okay with participating with assumptions as facts because to him he I think this is the way I see it he navigates using what we call logical inference, where I navigate on logical fact. A certain conception in the scholastic doctrine of divine simplicity, which leads to a lot of later Western ideas, such as uh, the revolutionary ethos and so forth, right? You get the skepticism, you get this uh, idea that you can't really know or uh, understand God uh, in terms of the Hesychast tradition, but rather God becomes a uh, abstract philosophical speculation that you uh, abstract a, a, a supremely simple essence from, that you deduce from creatures. And you can see this in Locke. You can see this in Kant. They do that very thing. And they even point out that problem. So those are the ideological issues that are, are running concurrent with these revolutionary problems and again people will misquote me and misstate what i'm saying and they'll say oh he's a human oh he's saying that uh no that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that the criticisms that some of these guys even these atheist people have is a result of problems in western theology and i mean losky backs me up he says that in the book so that's my critique of the whole period is that the revolutionary ethos isn't really about some masonic idea in the 1700s or something it's an older idea going back to hermetic and neoplatonic ideas that became um, ensconced and dogmatized in latin theology and i can tell you the exact places in benzinger where it's dogmatized hmm. so that leads to the the revolutions that leads to the rejection of the authority of the papacy because the papacy had an illegitimate authority based on philosophical problems uh, and forgeries the, the philosophical problems i'm talking about with filioque and divine simplicity that leads to the the whole collapse of that system it leads to the uh protestant uh deformation it leads to all of these issues and that's how we get to um the the outbreak of revolutions and those revolutions of course were financed by banking interests uh, quigley's very clear about that he has a whole chapter about the banking interest that financed the french revolution and the French Revolution is then who gave us this notion of a false left right. Do you want the right wing revolution or do you want the left wing revolution? Hegelian dialectic. And that's where we are today. America's left right paradigm is the inheritance of that. So the East solidifies its positions in the Palamite Synod. 
and the Latins solidify their positions in the ones I've mentioned. And that's that's really the break between the two systems. And it's only natural that the um, starting points of one's philosophy or worldview, namely who God is and how God relates to the world, obviously that's going to condition the rest of your view. That's going to condition the way that you view anthropology. It's going to condition the way you view the body-soul problem, knowledge, epistemology. It's going to then condition... The body soul problem. So the body soul is a problem for Jay. That's interesting. Condition your view of the state. So if you don't have the right theology, it's going to screw up your doctrine of uh, church state relations. So if you don't have the right fiction, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, belief, meaning if you don't have the right spiritual assumption then how are you going to have a, a right state so how are you going to have a right society then i see what he's saying here that's that's funny and so what is what is right what does that mean in this sense i guess it means that if you agree with jay then you're right if you don't then you don't have the right assumption the right belief system because that's what it is it's a belief system it's something that you cannot certify to anyone else so therefore it's an assumption and a presumption it's an opinion it's not a fact that's what religion is unless of course you dear viewer have closure on what a spirit is what space is what a fact is what correct is if you have closure on these things in your correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar dictionary as a lexicographer if you created these things then you have a basis with which to make claims to solidify your own biosphere and construct that others can come in and contract with now whereas someone like this individual and what he's talking about, the spiritual collapse of the West, he just explained it to you. He just said that you have, from coming from the French Revolution, a left-right Hegelian dialectic paradigm based on theological assumptions. And I guess whoever has the bigger guns and clubs wins out. And the papacy is corrupt right up to this very day so it just depends i mean if it's basically might makes right and the mob rules if you don't share the belief system of the mob you're going to be on the outside it's like i've said before when you talk to individuals who are very uh ooh, they're very sensitive about their bibles their particular editions of the bible they will argue with you and tell you why their Bible is the correct one and that you're using the wrong one or your interpretation is wrong because theirs is right. And if you don't share that with you, then, then you butt heads. And it's as I've always said, there can be no argument when the facts are in place. The only time there's argument is when there are no facts and we're talking about opinions and assumptions and presumptions. That's why people are always arguing about the Bible, interpretations of the Gospels, arguing about politics, arguing about religion, because it's all based on assumption, presumption, opinion. There is no factual context. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I treasure correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, the beautiful technology brought to the public by Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller. Because it gives you the capacity to position your claims in yourself and your family as facts within your biosphere. And those that want to contract with you in the domain of fact can come forth, meet you on the geometric level playing field and contract with you. And to those entities who don't want to contract you, contract with you in the domain of fact, 
to those that want to trespass, that those who want to take advantage of you, they will then be vacated from the geometric level playing field because they have no position there. Period. End of story. And that's the potency of correct sentence structure. If you'd like to learn this technology, contact me at the email address you see at the bottom of your screen. I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation for you and we can talk about it. If not, I have invested thousands of hours in editing and creating and publishing the over 400 videos on this very channel free to you so you can learn correct sentence structure if you want to. I've also created two different membership tiers if you want to join the channel and support the channel, support the work that I do. I very much appreciate it. Uh, the second tier, there is exclusive material available to those second tier members that aren't available to the general public. So check that out if you like. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.